chunky boy over here. I like Oreos. Like a lot. But I'm starting to realize I might have a problem. You see, I'm not a big sugar robot, but Oreos is a massive big exception for me. I try to eat one, but then I eat two, and then four, eight, sixteen, and your basic human multiplication skills can take you from there. And the thing is, I've tried to stop, but after a week without excessive Oreo consumption, it's all I can think about. So I went online to see if I was the only one who experiences Oreo obsession. And oh, me, gouache. There's article after article. Are Oreos really as addictive as Coke? Why do I crave Oreos? A guilty pleasure or a drug? Do Oreos have any nutritional value? <laughs> Come on, who are we trying to fool? But then I came across this article by Zimi Science, and it referenced the study that many of the other articles reference. A study where rats choose between Oreos and regular foods. Obviously, the rats favored the Oreos, but when scientists analyzed the brain, they found that the same pleasure centers in the brain that are activated by Coke were activated by the Oreos for the rats. It would be really easy to say that Oreos are like Coke, but Zimi Science states, This is basically the difference between things you really like and things you're addicted to. The difference between physiological addiction, addiction to a drug, and psychological addiction. So no, we are not addicted to Oreos. We're just sugar weak. Now that I established that I don't have a problem, I'm going to buy some Oreos. Quick quiz! How do you eat your Oreos? 1. You eat the center first like any rational being. You are intelligent. 2. You eat the whole Oreo at once. You are below average. 3. You eat the cream and throw away the cookie. You are my siblings. Thanks for taking the quiz, folks, and make sure to tell us in the comments which Oreo you prefer, so we can act accordingly. When I was at the store, I saw all kinds of Oreos. Half of them I didn't even know existed. But I settled on the minty ones because I wondered what toothpaste tastes like. After buying the Oreos, I wondered what could possibly make them more irresistible. Yeah! But before I started drawing, I needed some fuel. Okay, this is pretty wow! Hello. Okay, let's get started. You can see here that I already started with the sketch. That's because I didn't want to really stress out over, you know, making the original sketch perfect. Because the original sketch is supposed to be messy. So now I'm starting to add my color palette. And I tried to challenge myself on this one and make it a very limited color palette because it's honestly a better thing to do for artists because limitations make creativity. So that's why I chose to have such a limited color palette for this one. So you can see here I had an idea of a girl in glasses with a bunch of little, I don't know, or Oreo kittens? Yeah, that's what we're gonna call them. And the floating ones are supposed to be ghosts, but I changed the colors later on, so it makes it more sense. So now I started with the eyes, and I wanted to make them fuller, more glossy looking, because I'm not really one for hyper-realistic styles. Uh, I guess this counts as semi-realistic, but, you know, I want it to be more of a cartoon style, so big eyes so I can add some gloss to them later. And for this piece, I was really trying to avoid blending things in, because it's a common thing I do in my art, and I feel like I don't get a lot of contrast when I blend things in too much. So this time, I was just trying to block everything out. You can see the blue highlights still blend into her skin, it's just a harsh light. And, you know, I'm trying to also limit my layering modes, since this is supposed to be a digitally painted piece. So you can see here that I paint all the shadows and stuff, and now I'm going to move on to the lips. And the lips, make sure they're juicy, okay? Make sure they're juicy. Which is something I also struggled with 
a lot. So for this one, since I was trying not to blend things in and or use layer modes, I did a slight blue to make sure it could show how glossy they are, you know, the reflections of the light, and then a harsh white so it could show a full reflection. I did play around with the lips a little bit here, but you know, that's just how you do art. You've got to tinker a bit and then find your right position on it. So then I started blocking in the harsh light for the blue. So, you know, you could see the distinction between her neck and her face. And I did make a little bit of an exception here with the face because, you know, I like, I like smooth faces, but they need to have some little color variation. So some blending here and there uh, wouldn't hurt. And also I refined the glasses and I'll refine it more later on. Then I added a little gradient to make it pop a little more and, you know, a little more lifelike. Now for the hair, it was kind of tricky because I wanted something in between a twist and a poofy style. So, but also I couldn't blend things in. So I tried blocking things out, you know, more emphasizing little hair strands, really emphasizing the shadows because I'm not going to draw every single hair strand. So you got to do it in clumps. So here I blocked in the shadows and then I added a lighter color on top to make it seem like everything was just drawn on. That's how you get that effect with the digital painting style. So here I started thickening up the hair. You know, they give it more volume, make it feel more alive, and, you know, add a bunch of texture to it. Because with this hair, you just gotta make sure everything's textured. And I started refining the lighting, too, so it could really pop, you know, some parts of the hair. That's why on this section, I only colored in this little part of the hair, so it could give the effect of a shadow. Because if you color every bit of lighting on the hair, then there's no contrast and it just looks like one solid color. So you gotta be really careful about what colors you use. So you can see here, I'm still trying to avoid blending as much as possible. And I'm really liking the effect it's giving me. Now for the clothes. I'm trying something different with the clothes because I feel like clothes just have so many textures and stuff. So, you know, blending is kind of inevitable, but also I just tried to use every brush I could find, every texture brush, because clothes should be textured. That's like the whole point of them. So I found a bunch of different brushes. I played around with some I liked and I liked the result that came out. You just gotta experiment when it comes to these things. And for the cup, I just modeled it after a Starbucks cup. And yes, I used a reference on something as simple as a cup. References are important, people. Make sure to pay attention. I started to really redefine the eyes, you know, finally give them that glossy texture now that I knew what the rest of the art piece was gonna look like. And I also started adding those highlights to the glasses as well. You really got to be careful where your light source is because if you do it on the other side or, you know, other direction, it's just not going to look right. So you got to make sure it makes sense. Then I made some simple steam coming out of the cup. 
and after that, that's when I worked on the ghost Oreos. I finally found a good color that would work with the rest of the scene. And, you know, I, I wasn't doing anything really big with these ones, so, you know, I just added the base colors, a little face, and then I redefined the scheme around the coffee co cookie. And I guess they're ghosts, so all of them kind of have steam. And then I started filling in the real cookies. You know, just blocking in the color, nothing fancy. Drawing little faces, making sure to get, you know, the chunky boy over here, the double stuff. And after that, I just started adding the shadows, you know, to make it pop and stand out a little more, make it seem like it's in the scene. And after that, I was just about done. Now this piece I really love, so I wanted to add it to my shop. And I did. I'm not sure how long I'm going to keep this listed because Big Cartel only allows five listings with the free version. But if I get enough sales, I'll upgrade and be able to keep it up longer and also maybe add some more work. So if you like my work, consider getting a print or a shirt. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. This is the start of the robot revolution and I hope you see you in the next video. You know when you feel like you have your style down pat but you find a whole new way of doing things and it changes your art completely? That's what kind of happened with this piece. Before, I kind of did mostly line art and stuff, and I still do love it, but I've always had like a gravitation towards the digital painted style with different artists that I look up to. So I've tried to really dive in for this piece, and I just love how it came out. I hope this helped anyone who watched it try a new style. Hope to see you next time. Bye!